got through a lot of batteries around here, apparently. And uh, up to now, we've always used lead acid batteries, but uh, these will be the last lead acid batteries I ever buy. I've had really good luck with the 100 amp hour watt cycle 12 volt battery uh, running my uh, front gate. And about two months after I bought it, I got contacted by Watt Cycle and they wanted to know if I wanted to try out one of their 200 amp hour batteries. So what do you think I said? <laughs> So they sent me this beast right here. This thing's great. I thought the 100 amp battery was great. This thing's a monster. We're going to test it out and we're going to do some tests with it. And we're going to build a 12 volt solar system out of this and see what we can power with it. So it's going to be fun. So stick around. LifePo 4 battery technology really is a huge advance in 12-volt deep cycle batteries. With lead-acid batteries, you can't discharge them below 50% of the total capacity without damaging them. With LifePo batteries, you can discharge them to 100% without damaging them. To me, that is the same as a LifePo battery being equal to two lead-acid batteries. I purchased my first 12-volt LifePo battery after watching a YouTube video from Will Prowse, where he featured the Watt Cycle 100 amp hour battery Will said he really liked the build quality of the battery, and his video showed the steel reinforcement inside the battery case that helped the Prismatic Life 04 battery cells together securely. That was good enough for me, so I ordered the 100 amp hour watt cycle 12 volt battery to replace the lead acid battery that I used to power my automatic gate open. Since installing it, the batteries work flawlessly and more powerfully than the lead acid battery. It's charged by a 30 watt solar panel, and so it is much nicer than the old lead acid. When Watt Cycle contacted us and asked if we'd be interested in testing the 200 amp hour 12 volt Life Pro 4 battery, I told them that I've been using the 100 amp hour for several months already. This 200 amp hour battery from Watt Cycle is a beast and it packs a lot more power than the 100 amp hour model. With 2560 watt hours or 2.56 kilowatts of energy storage, this means that if you're using it to run a 12 volt appliance or an inverter powered in AC appliances, you'll get around twice as much time between charging compared to the 100 amp hour model. The first thing I did with the new battery was to test out the charging and capacity of the battery. For charging, I'm using the Watt Cycle 20 amp LifePo battery charger. Okay, we're gonna charge the battery all the way up and then we're gonna do a capacity test on it, see how much we can pull out of the battery. All right, we finally got a green light. So we are charged. It took a couple hours, but this beast is fully charged. Now we're gonna do a capacity test Let's start testing the capacity on this uh, watt cycle 200 amp hour battery. I'm going to roll it up to I don't know, about 135 watts. 130. Just so we don't go over. 130 watts. So at 130 watts, this should be about 100 and so we've got almost 20 hours of runtime at 130 watts. So we'll see what it does. Okay, we've drained the battery and we pulled out 2,589 watt hours. So a little bit more than rated power. And this battery's been cycled, I don't know, four, five, six times. So that's pretty good. The watt cycle 200 amp hour battery featured grade A prismatic LiPo 4 cells. They're 100 amps each. The battery is stout at about 45 pounds, but comes with some really nice carrying handles that are mounted securely to the battery. The case is rated IP65. The battery is rated for 5,000 to 15,000 deep cycle discharge cycles. That's almost 14 years if you discharge it once a day. Definitely going to last a lot longer than a lead acid battery, that's for sure. The built-in 200 amp BMS balances and regulates the battery functions and the technology protects against overcharging, over discharging, low temp charging, overloading, and short circuits. It monitors each of the eight cells and keeps them precisely balanced for optimum performance. You can expand up to 16 of these 200 amp hour batteries in a 4S, 4P configuration. This is ideal for a small 12 volt solar system. So when I told the folks at Watt Cycle I planned to build a small solar system with the battery, 
they sent me one of their LiPo 4 chargers and a 30 amp MPPT solar charger. I didn't even know that Watt Cycle sells all sorts of components for building 12 and 24 volt systems using RVs, boats, cars, trucks, and off-grid solar applications. So I recommend you check out their website and some of their other products because the ones they sent me to test work flawlessly. They also sell a wide range of batteries designed for golf carts, trolling motors, and even larger applications. So it's easy to find the right battery application for your needs. Watt Cycle appears to be making some of the best designed 12 volt life Pro 4 batteries on the market today. The Watt Cycle 200 amp hour life Pro 4 battery is large enough to easily run a 2,000 to 2,500 watt DC to AC inverter. This means it can power most refrigerators, freezers, lights, fans, and other items you might need in a grid down situation. Seeing how easy it is to wire up a solar panel, solar charge controller, and an inverter, this means you can easily use the battery for daily needs like I do in my gate opener, but in an emergency, you can use the battery to supply a solar power backup to run the critical needs in your homes during a blackout. So that's two functions out of one tool in my book. With a powerful Life Pro 4 12 volt battery like the Watt Cycle 200 amp hour model, you have the backbone of a complete 12 volt power solar system. With backup 12 volt solar system capable of powering your critical needs and appliances during a grid down situation, you need four major components. You need a battery, you need a solar charge controller, you need a solar panel, which I've got right outside the door, and you need a DC to AC inverter. So for our testing today, we're going to use the LiPo 4 battery from Watt Cycle 200 amp hour. Look for the discount code in the video description. An MPPT charge controller is much more efficient compared to a PWM charge controller, so try to stick with the true high-powered MPPT model like this Watt Cycle model. This one from Watt Cycle is competitively priced, and that's before adding my discount code in the video description. Now, solar panel. With this charge controller, you can add up to 600 watts of solar power when using a 12 volt battery, or 1200 watts of solar if you're using a 24 volt system. For testing purposes today, we're going to use this 400 watt bifacial solar panel from Hyperion. And for a DC to AC power inverter, I suggest only going with a pure sine wave inverter. If you tend to power any electronic devices. A modified sine wave inverter is cheaper, but it will damage some of the electronics like modern refrigerators or similar appliances. In this test, I'm using the Gandel 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I purchased this one off Amazon, and I'll leave a link in the video description where you can get it. There are many cheaper inverters available, but they tend to overstate the power rate. Gandel is one of the few brands that consistently gets great reviews on YouTube and Amazon, and they don't overinflate what they tell you the inverter can produce. This one costs around $220, and for the price, I don't know if you can get a, a more reliable and powerful pure sine wave inverter for the money. You can also use a 1,000 or 1,500 watt model, and they're slightly less expensive, but they should be able to provide consistent power enough to run lights, fans, and small appliances from a 12 volt solar system. Before starting in a 12 volt solar system, you're working with high amperage, so overcurrent protection and adequate switching is a major safety concern. In this case, I've installed a 150 amp marine rated battery fuse that mounts on the battery terminal. I'm also using an inline 5 to 60 volt DC 200 amp battery switch. This is important to avoid DC arcs from short circuits and terminal connections. Don't build a system without proper fuses, wiring, and switches. To build a solar system is pretty simple. You just connect the charge controller and inverter to the battery and the solar panel to the charge controller. You need a way to shut off the battery power when doing so, and this is a DC rated switch that's really essential. You'll also need to adequately size any battery wiring, and we do this based on potential amperage. In this case, we're using a one-off battery cable that's rated up to 170 amps, and then we're using a 150 amp fuse. So we always want to fuse our circuits below the capacity of the wiring. So basically, I've hooked up the, the solar panels to the charge controller. I put the charge controller up to the battery, the battery up to the inverter. And from the output of the inverter, we've got simply a you know, typical 120 volt GF staff for the circuit. So all we have to do here is turn on the power for the battery. There we go. And then we'll come over here, we'll turn on the inverter. So now our battery is being charged by the solar panel continuously. The battery output's going into the inverter. The inverter's going to put out 120 volts that we can use for power appliances. So let's look something up, see what happens. Here we got your typical space heater, and this one does, I think, up to 1500 watts. So let's see how it does with the uh, 2001 inverter. So we'll simply turn this on. And now the readout on the inverter is showing 1400 watts. 
Worn out. While we're outputting AC power, it's drawing down on the battery, so the bat voltage on our battery is dropping. So it's not having any problem running a 1400 watt load of a space heater. And now I'll just turn the uh, inverter off and watch the, watch the voltage on the battery. You can watch the battery voltage here if I turn the inverter off. climb back up. And that 13 volts is the charging coming in from the solar panel and the charge control. So in the same time we're outputting power into the heater, we're bringing power in from the solar panel. And this is what allows you to lengthen the time you can run this battery. Otherwise, you, you would simply run the battery until it ran out. When you have solar power coming in to your battery, you can use your inverter occasionally when you need it your battery is continuously being charged by the solar panel and down here with the charge controller we can look here we got 13.2 volts that's 2.6 amps coming in from the solar panel 112 watt hours is what it's putting out 31.2 volts that's what's coming from the solar panel so if you take the 31 volts that's times 2.9 amps. Thirty-one times 2.9 equals the total wattage coming out of the solar panels. So let's test the capacity of the inverter. Right now we're pulling about 1,400 watts. We'll plug this in on the other end. We'll plug this heat gun in, and we'll raise this up and see what we get. We'll see this. So now we're running over the 2,000 watt continuous capacity. And the inverter's doing a really good job. I'm gonna spike it up here. Well, that, that did it. So what I did there was I, I plugged in the heat gun and turned it from 600 watts up to 1,500 watts and that overloaded the inverter by almost a thousand watts, I guess, and uh, it shut off after a few seconds. So, but really, it's a great inverter for uh, 2000, to be able to hold 2100 watts steady. So basically, the inverter, when you overload the inverter, it's got safety features built in and it will shut itself off. So you can see this watch cycle 200 amp hour battery can, can serve a lot of purposes around your house. If you're like me and you have a gate over, you can use it out there, but if you have an emergency, you can add an inverter, a solar charge controller, a solar panel, and you've got a temporary solar system from when your power goes up. So as you can see, I'm pretty happy with the watt cycle battery I purchased, and I'm even more happy with the 200 amp hour watt cycle battery. So to sum this up, if you're still using 12 volt lead acid batteries around your house to power things, you might want to check into a LifePo 4 12 volt battery. I found that they provide a lot more power, a lot more predictable, and they're a lot more reliable and last longer than typical lead acid batteries. So for my money, it's a good investment. Hey, if you'll check the video description, I put a 6% discount for any of the Watt Cycle LiPo 4 batteries if you want to order one. Appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions about the Watt Cycle LiPo 4 battery, put them in the comments section. We'll try to get them answered. Hey, I'm Michael, and we're living two steps from off-grid and trying to make it zero.